For today's project, you will need a few different materials. You're going to need to have some markers so that you can color your um, coffee filter. You're gonna to wanna to have a little bit of glue, some clear tape, um, some straws. So I'm using a recycled, well, this is a paper straw, and then I have a recycled straw for my sample here. And then we are also gonna need some scissors and some coffee filters. If you don't have straws, you can use like stirs that come with like coffee maybe for your parents or you could just use make the flower and then you can always just attach it to a wall or you could use some string and hang it from like a window. So you don't have to have the straws. If you don't have them, it doesn't mean you can't do the project. You're also gonna wanna have a bin of some kind for spraying the water so it stays neat. Um, I'm just using an, a plastic bin because I can clean it later. You can also use um, like a tin foil Bit, like a pan that you use for cooking um, because you can wash it after and it's not none of these materials will be toxic so you can wash it and reuse them the bin again to start today's activity you're going to want to grab your coffee filters and we're going to decorate them first make sure you only use one coffee filter sometimes they get stuck together so just double check that you're just using one you can make as many of these as you want, but I'm just going to show you how to do it using just one. Make sure, because the coffee filter is so thin, sometimes your markers can go through. So make sure you're working on a surface that can be cleaned or put something like a scratch paper down so that um, if, if it does go through, it's not a big deal. So our first task is going to be to add as many colors as we possibly can to our coffee filter. And other things you can do is think about how different colors mix together because you know that they're going to kind of bleed into similar colors. So if I want to do, I could do red. I'm just using triangles as a shape. And you can make different shapes on your own. And if I put yellow next to it, what happens when yellow and red mix together? they make orange. So hopefully if I spray it and the red and the yellow kind of touch when they bleed using the water, the water kind of makes the paint, the ink from the marker spread, they'll make orange for me. So the more you color, the more your colors will bleed because there's more ink on the paper. So if you don't put too much, if you don't fill in your shapes, you just make lines, the color won't bleed too much. So just keep that in mind. Other things I can do is put other colors that mix together and just see what happens. I can just experiment. It doesn't have to be all planned out. So I'm just gonna do dots. Maybe I'm also gonna do some blue. Or maybe even purple. And I kinda just wanna see what happens. So I'm gonna make one orange dot on top of my yellow and you can color on top of, you can do layered markers if you want. Keep adding color everywhere. The more color you add, as I mentioned, the more these colors will kind of spread and make cool designs. So you do want to make sure that you're really using as much of the paper as you can and you can layer the colors together and see what happens. <laughs> Once you're done adding color to your coffee filter, you're ready to spray it with the water. So now you want to set aside your markers and grab your bin. And using your bin, that's gonna help to keep the water from going everywhere. You're going to spray using a spray bottle and your spray bottle doesn't have to look like this as I mentioned, but you do wanna think about um, less is more. You don't wanna soak the entire coffee filter or else all the ink might bleed out. So just spray and kind of see what happens. Wait a little while. And then if you need to spray more, you can always spray more after you kind of see what's happening, what's the effect so far. 
Once it starts to kind of bleed, that's a good time to stop just so that it doesn't get too much water. So I can start to see my colors are bleeding now. So I'm gonna stop spraying and I'm going to set it aside and leave it in here so it can dry. Just show you a close up of how it's looking so far. So you can see how it's bleeding. The colors are mixing, blending together. You have to wait until it is totally dry in order to start continuing on and cutting your flower. I have one pre-made already, so I will start moving forward. This is the one I pre-made and I sprayed, and I kind of wanted to see how the yellows and the oranges and the greens and the blues would all mix. In some places, it made kind of an interesting color because orange and blue are complementary colors. They're opposites on the color wheel, so that makes some interesting like neutrals, like browns and grays. Um, but other than that, the colors made some really beautiful blends. Now that it's dry, I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut lines. I can make my petals thick or thin, it's up to you. But the farther you go towards the middle, you just want to make sure you don't cut all the way to the middle because then you won't have any middle. So you can go, maybe I'll make one line just to help guide me for the first one. So if I want to go around that length, I can follow my line. And then if you leave more space between, you're going to have thicker petals. And if you cut closer to the middle, you're going to have um, a smaller middle to your flower. So it's up to you. This one has kind of big middle, so I'm going to try one with a smaller middle by cutting closer to the middle of the flower this time. The main thing is you don't want to cut all the way to the middle because then all your petals will just fall apart. So that's very important to make sure you don't cut all the way to another line that you already cut. Once you've cut all your petals, you're going to start to fold them in. Now there's a few options. You can fold them in and leave these parts kind of wide and let them overlap as you keep going, like so. And that creates kind of an interesting effect. Or you can also cut every other petal so that you have more space to take. So if I want to cut every other petal, I'm going to fold it up and then I'm going to just cut and make sure I only cut that one petal. You don't want to cut through any of the other ones. So I can see my scissors popping out on the other side. And just be safe while you're using the scissors. So thumb always to the sky and never have the scissors pointing up towards your face. If you have an extra two that are right next to each other, that's okay. Just keep them together um, and then you can just fold them in that way. So now I'm going to fold in to create my petals. And this one's very different than this one since I made mine wider. So now I have more of like these really thick petals, which are kind of fun. So to do this, you can either use the clear tape and just use it sparingly, don't use too much, or you can also use the glue, it's up to you. But for me, I'm going to use just the tiniest little bit of tape. So make sure I'm, I don't want to waste, especially since this is a plastic. So I'm just going to tape just enough to hold down my petal. And then I'm going to flip it over and I can see how it came out. So now I finished taping my flower together. And the nice thing about this project is that it is two-sided so you can decide which side you like better so after I did this side I actually think I like this side better and that's what's kind of fun about it if you cut off the strips you can also use them again so if you want to add them back on to make more petals 
you can do that. So if I wanted to add them, I could take them on here or I could even take them in the back and make the flower a little bit bigger. But that's up to you, that's an optional add-on. I'm pretty happy with how mine's came out, so I'm gonna leave it as is. And then my next thing I'm gonna do is to add the stem. You could also use these to maybe make like leaves down the sides of the straw. That's up to you. So, when you're ready to attach it to the straw, just take enough tape to go around the straw, and then you're going to tape, and make sure your tape goes on both sides, and really push it down with your finger to make sure it's secure. I might do just one more piece. Not too much tape, I don't wanna waste. And then now I have my flower. One last option if you want to, you can also use recycled bottle caps to make the center of your flower. And if you do wanna do that, you would wanna do that using glue. And you would glue it and attach it to the coffee filter if you wanna do that. That's just something if you wanted to add that on. Thank you so much for joining us in today's tutorial video. I hope you enjoyed it and we really look forward to seeing what you guys make. Don't forget to tag us if you make these projects at home and follow Art Explorium on Facebook, Instagram to see our latest updates and more tutorial videos to come. Thank you again. See you.